The next item of business is a statement by Derek Mackay on response to the report of the Barclay Review of Non-Domestic Rates. The Cabinet Secretary will take questions at the end of his statement, so there should be no interventions or interruptions. Cabinet Secretary, 15 minutes or thereabouts, please. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Three weeks ago today, Ken Barclay published his report into the non-domestic rates in Scotland. He and his team of Professor Russell Griggs OBE, Isabel D'Inverno, Nora Senior CBE and David Henderson produced a thorough report and I wish to take this opportunity to convey my thanks again to them and commend them on their contribution. As members will recall, I said when I received the report that I would respond quickly. Last week, the First Minister set out in the programme for government that we would immediately take forward four of the recommendations from the Barclay Review. These were to hold more regular revaluations, introduce a new relief for day nurseries, expand fresh start relief to create a greater incentive to bring empty properties back into economic use, and to review plant and machinery valuations. A key matter is the frequency of revaluations. I agree with Barclay of the need for more regular revaluations, and as the review suggests, after the 2022 revaluation, they will take place every three years. Crucially, we will also ensure that the tone date will be brought forward from two years prior to one year. Combined, this will help ensure that our rating system is more flexible to the changing economic circumstances that businesses face and reduce the large shocks such as those experienced by some earlier this year. I propose that the new relief for day nurseries will commence on 1st of April 2018 and will be a full 100% relief. Scotland has always been a leader in education and childcare, and this is the first relief of its kind anywhere in the UK. Fresh Start, a relief I introduced in 2013, will also be expanded from the 1st of April. I accept the Barclay proposal that the relief should increase from 50% to 100% for the first year of new occupation and should be available after a property has been empty for six months rather than the current 12. These are suggested to help bring empty town centre properties back into use. However, to stimulate the whole economy and reduce the number of properties sitting vacant, I will go further still and make relief available for all types of property, including industrial property. The Barclay Review of Plant and Machinery will commence shortly and I will ensure that this fast-tracks the valuation of hydro schemes, as I believe an early look at this area is essential to secure inward investment in Scotland. Following on from the swift acceptance of those four recommendations last week, I will now outline my fuller response to this chamber. This has been informed by a number of meetings I have held with a range of organisations since the publication to discuss the report and how it should be implemented. It is a measure of the importance we place on the economy that we commissioned the Barclay Review in the first place. The Barclay Report made 30 recommendations to boost economic growth, improve administration and increase transparency and fairness. And they did so within their remit of revenue neutrality. And turning to those recommendations not covered by the programme for government, I can confirm to the Chamber that it is my intention to move now to implement the vast majority of them. Subject to any legal or regulatory considerations, the budget process, and of course the will of Parliament. And we will consult further on some before taking a final decision before the end of the year. I now turn to the first and the flagship recommendation made by Barclay, the Business Growth Accelerator. Of all the recommendations, the Barclay Review felt this would give Scotland the edge in attracting investment and growing the economy. I agree. Developing our economy and supporting business to invest and grow is central to this government's activity. And I accept this recommendation and will include it in the draft budget for 2018-19. And I'm firmly of the view that this will give Scotland's businesses a competitive advantage and provide the economy with a welcome boost. But in this crucial recommendation, I want to go beyond Barclay. From 1st of April next year, I will ensure that every new build property does not pay a single penny in rates until it is occupied for the first time. I've met the assessors 
and they have agreed to the principle of delaying the entry of new property onto the valuation role. I will also withdraw the 2009 completion notice guidance issued to finance directors. I urge the business community and developers alike to consider precisely what this means. A new build property will not pay rates until it is occupied and then your tenant will then benefit from a one year without rates through the growth accelerator. This means combined with the more favourable rates of LBTT on commercial transactions, this will mark Scotland as the most competitive place in the UK for business to grow and invest. Of the other 19 recommendations, I will set out our position on each. I note that Barclay concluded that the large business supplement should be reduced to 1.3 pence and over the course of this parliament I will do so should it become affordable and will consider this in future year's budgets. Barclay made a number of recommendations about the provision of information and standardised billing and today I issued invitations to stakeholders to sit on an advisory group to inform some of the administrative reforms. Long term or longer term this group will also feed into the development of online billing. And I agree with Barclay that transparency over how relief is awarded will also help improve understanding and so I accept recommendations to publish data on which properties are in receipt of relief. This government is committed to the small business bonus. However, as recommended by Barclay, a review will be undertaken of the scheme to ensure that we maximise the economic and social benefits of the scheme. Barclay recommended a number of areas where the assessors need to improve their service and having met with the Scottish Assessors Association last week, can confirm action to address this is already underway and I have asked them to present me with their implementation action plan by the end of this month. Ratepayers must also play their part in improving the system and they need to provide assessors and councils with the necessary information that they need to do their job and so I accept recommendations to create new civil penalties. If the information going to the system is better, that should mean valuations are more accurate and reliance on appeals should reduce. I also agree the principles that should underpin the appeal system as these move into Tribunal Scotland in 2022. And I agree that the appeal system should allow rateable values to be corrected upwards as well as downwards from that point onwards. And councils also need to improve the service they offer and I will remind them of the need to issue prompt payments to ratepayers. Debt recovery for both local taxes, council tax and non-domestic rates need to be brought into line with each other so the time for rates debt recovery will be brought forward. This government is committed to reducing tax avoidance and where we have control we have taken steps to do just that. I welcome the Barclay recommendations to close off specific known avoidance tactics and the creation of a general anti-avoidance rule to help future-proof the rate system by closing off loopholes and the avoidance tactics that may emerge over time. Shorter term, a commercial rateable value finder product will help ensure all property that should pay rates does pay rates. Errors may also occur in the award of relief and with immediate effect, Scottish Government will initiate administrative checks of the various data it receives for errors. After engaging with stakeholders, I believe a small number of recommendations merit further thought and engagement. This is entirely in keeping with the recommendation number eight of Barclay, that wherever possible, the Scottish Government should consult on changes to the rate system in advance of these being implemented. These recommendations that require further consideration and engagement are those that remove charity relief for certain recipients, including ALOs, independent schools and accommodation by universities, relief of, uh, reform of relief for sports clubs, uh, empty properties and properties in active occupation, and the levying of rates and parks. On each of those areas, I will continue engagement to fully understand the impact of and any wider implications and possible unintended consequences in each of these areas. Before outlining my position in the implementation plan, I propose to publish later this year. These issues will each be considered individually and the most appropriate route forward taken for each. And finally, presiding officer, there are two recommendations that I have decided not to take forward at this time. I will not progress the option to put farms on evaluation role and to levy rates on commercial agricultural processing. This would create a significant administrative burden on the assessors at a time when their focus must be on improvements to the service they provide 
and the move to more frequent revaluations. More importantly, in not taking these recommendations forward, I want it to be clear to this sector that the Government recognises the invaluable contribution that you make to our economy. Presiding officer, my message to business after announcing this package is clear. Come to Scotland, invest in Scotland and grow your business in Scotland. Presiding officer, today I publish a full response to the Barclay report and I commit to a full implementation plan before the end of 2017. As members will be aware, there are a range of actions required to enact the recommendations accepted. But before I close, I want to take this opportunity to announce that the cap for offices in Aberdeen City, in Aberdeen Shire, and all but the very largest hospitality properties will continue next year with an additional 12.5% cap in real terms. I also encourage the sector and assessors to work together to explore alternative methods of valuation. Additionally, until such times that the review of hydro plant and machinery valuations has concluded and any recommendations are implemented, I will offer a 60% new relief for hydro schemes from the 1st of April 2018, subject to an upper value threshold. This government leads and innovates when it comes to using the limited powers at our disposal. And today I'm using those powers to create a fairer, more transparent rate system that better supports economic growth. Presiding officer, this statement outlines the government's position on the Barclay Review. The recommendations that we will take forward and the additional measures beyond Barclay that I've announced today demonstrate our ambition for the economy and our desire to work with the business community to deliver upon that ambition. And once implemented, we will have a rate system that is fairer, more responsive and geared for growth. I commend this statement to the Chamber. I thank you, Cabinet Secretary. The Cabinet Secretary will now take questions on the issues raised in his statement. I intend to allow 30 minutes or so for questions, after which we must move on to the next item of business. It would be helpful if members who wish to ask a question were to press the request to speak buttons now. And I call Murdo Fraser. Mr Fraser, please. Uh, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Can I start by thanking the Cabinet Secretary for his statement and for advanced sight of it? And um, I would like to join him in thanking Ken Barclay and his team for producing their report, which gives us all much to consider. A great deal of what the Cabinet Secretary has announced today we would agree with. Can I welcome in particular the move to three-year revaluations, the standardisation of bills, the new relief for day nurseries and the new exemption for hydro schemes. I also welcome the proposals to exempt from rates empty new build properties and the indication that there will be a reduction in the large business supplement. Although I would gently point out to the Cabinet Secretary that what he's doing here in both these cases is simply reversing damaging policy choices made by his predecessor, Mr Swinney. Yeah. Now, I have two specific questions for the Cabinet Secretary. Firstly, the cap on increases for hospitality premises and offices in the North East is stated to be an additional 12.5% in real terms for next year. For the avoidance of doubt, can the Cabinet Secretary confirm that this figure is cumulative with this year's cap, meaning that the businesses affected will be facing increases of up to 30% or so over a two-year period? And secondly, I note that the Cabinet Secretary is keeping alive the possibility of ending rate relief for sports clubs and local authority arm's length organisations which run swimming pools, uh, gyms and leisure centres, a measure which I've pointed out before would undermine Scottish Government policy in encouraging active lifestyles and tackling obesity. Why won't the Cabinet Secretary join with us today in ruling out this damaging SNP swim tax? Cabinet Secretary. I'm now not surprised that the Conservatives didn't submit evidence to the Barclay Commission and when challenged also didn't submit, didn't submit uh, any thoughts uh, after publication for me to consider in advance of today's statement. In fact, the only political party in this chamber that took it seriously was the Green Party who offered uh, suggestions. So it would appear once again that the Conservatives, other than welcoming a range of actions that I've committed the government to in a welcoming you, welcoming uh, so much of what I'm proposing today, but the Tory party is bereft of their own ideas as to how to improve the rates. 
Uh, system. I can only imagine how depressed Murdo Fraser was when he read my statement and realised what a fantastic package we were putting forward for uh, Scotland. In terms of the questions that have been asked, two specific questions. First of all, there are areas that I've said requires further consideration and uh, alios and sport clubs are in that category of requiring further consideration and engagement. In keeping with what Barclay has recommended to engage uh, further uh, on that and absolutely that's what I'll do because the government has certainly moved very swiftly on this issue but I think it's appropriate to take the time to get it right but you see once again the Conservatives are arguing for more spending and tax cuts at exactly the same time showing their economic uh, mess that they don't understand what is before them. In terms of the request around the hospitality sector and the cap that I proposed for the North East by way of offices. I have had correspondence from both the hospitality sector eh, and the, the North East. And, and when asked you know, what feels like a fair eh, increase, recognising the recommendations of the assessors who are independent of Scottish Government, but Scottish Government intervened to place a cap on the increases in the hospitality sector and also for the North East, eh, that 12.5% eh, real terms cap was welcomed by that sector and certainly that part of Scotland. And both uh, the Chamber of Commerce in the North East and the British Hospitality Association in, in terms of the hospitality request felt that a further, an additional cap of 12.5% would feel fair. And that's exactly what I'm proposing today. Jackie Bailey. Can I welcome much in the Cabinet Secretary's statement and the Barclay recommendations, in particular exempting children's nurseries, something suggested by my Labour colleague Daniel Johnson, um, and indeed the relief for hydro schemes, which will help potentially projects in my constituency. At the start of the review, the Cabinet Secretary said it needed to be revenue neutral. Today, you've announced measures that I believe are well in excess of £55 million, but you've given no indication of revenue-raising measures. So is it still revenue neutral? And do you therefore anticipate um, the gap being taken up by sports clubs, local authority arms length organisations and others? Um, secondly, I do welcome the extension of the 12.5% cap, but it is the case that businesses are still struggling. Business organisations tell me that local authorities are managing the cap in very different ways. Some are manually adjusting the bills so the cap applies immediately. Others um, are actually insisting they apply for a rebate and that takes time and businesses in the meantime have to pay in full all their rates. That is also true for those caught up in the appeal system. So will the Cabinet Secretary therefore take practical action now so that businesses actually fully benefit from the 12.5% cap? Cabinet Secretary. Well, I, I'm sure that um, Jackie Bailey and, and what could be characterised as quite a generous um, contribution. Uh, I point out also the Labour Party failed to submit anything to Barclay, failed to just give me anything in terms of what was in terms of what was a priority uh, coming forward. And you know, the Barclay review was um, commissioned before Daniel Johnson was a member, so that's some feat to be able to influence it before Mr Johnson was uh, a member of Parliament. But that said, but that said um, I think the uh, new relief uh, for nurseries will be very warmly welcomed. It's very much in keeping with this government's uh, policy of supporting uh, nurseries and the expansion of childcare provision. Again, specifically, I think, it's, I think it's good going for the government to receive a request from particular sectors, and by that I mean specifically a 12.5% real terms uh, cap, and for the government to agree to that. And that's why we've been able to take a range of actions before, during and after revaluation to support businesses. And I, I look forward to the response of the business community on the recommendations that I've accepted today. Indeed, going beyond Barclay and gearing for growth, uh, our strategy uh, going uh, forward. In terms of revenue neutrality, it's correct to say that the uh, remit uh, of the Barclay panel was to be revenue neutral. Uh, the, but the decisions that uh, the government takes will be taken in accordance with the budget and the negotiations uh, that I have. So it will be for Parliament ultimately to approve the budget. But what I'm announcing today is government intention and of course that that will require uh, parliamentary support. And in that sense, I look forward to the positive engagement 
of all parties in this chamber working with me to deliver a budget that delivers the recommendations that the opposition parties tell me their support. And in that sense, it's a wee bit, a wee bit harder uh, to do all the good stuff uh, and not to uh, tackle some issues for revenue uh, raising. But on those areas that I'm not progressing with today, as I've said again, I've said before, I've said before and I'll say again, that I want to explore thoroughly to make sure I engage and consult uh, to get it right and take into account the views of stakeholders. And that's what I've been doing since the publication of the Barclay Report. Uh, thank you, Cabinet Secretary. I have 15 members wanting to ask questions. The clue is in the word questions. Concise questions, please, and concise responses would be helpful. Mr Doris, followed by Dean Lockhart. Uh, thank you, President Officer. President Officer, I welcome that the Scottish Government will consult ahead of any reforms of rates relief to Alios. I would ask the Cabinet Secretary to approach any change with great caution to ensure that those using leisure facilities such as Glasgow Life do not suffer any unintended or detrimental consequences, but also to be similarly wary of any blanket exclusion of alleys applying for sports club relief, which could have similar unintended consequences. Yeah. I think that was a question. Cabinet Secretary. Oh, that was two. Y yes, presiding officer, I'll take the time <laughs> to engage with people to make sure that we have a balanced approach on that and other matters. Dean Lockhart, followed by Gillian Martin. Thank you. The Cabinet Secretary will be aware that a number of organisations have raised concerns about the methodology used to calculate rates in the hospitality sector, something I reminded him about in writing only yesterday. Rates in this sector are calculated... No, I based... want a question. Can the Cabinet Secretary, Good. therefore, can the Cabinet Secretary explain what substantive measures he will be taking to change the methodology used in the uh, hospitality sector to calculate rates? Because the temporary sticking plaster of a cap does not address the underlying concerns raised by the SLTA, the STA no, and no, other leading organisations. No, no, you're being too cute there, Thank Cabinet you. Secretary. Well, first of all, Presiding Officer, let's, uh, let's see what the hospitality sector says about the package that I've announced uh, today, but I'm beginning to wonder if Dean Lockhart has actually read the report or indeed understands that I can't direct the assessors in the fashion that he's described. It's a matter for the assessors to judge what methodology they use. But yes, I do agree, I do agree, and I've said this directly to assessors, that they should consider issues of methodology, uh, but no matter what, I'm proposing a cap for that sector uh, nonetheless uh, to, support, to support that sector as the issues of methodology uh, are looked at to see if there is a better way to value those particular uh, premises. And I know that that will be warmly received by the sector and assessors will engage in that in a constructive manner. Gillian Martin followed by Andy Whiteman. Presiding officer, as North East MSP representing Aberdeenshire, I'm very pleased to hear about transitional relief for the North East and it's going to be continued by the government. The Cabinet Secretary will know that both Aberdeenshire Question, please. and Aberdeenshire City Council... Question, Council's please have implemented local relief schemes. Will he join me in calling on both councils and administrations to match the Scottish Government's commitment to the region with the continuation of these local relief schemes? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, yes, I would concur with that point. Under the Community Empowerment Act legislation, any council can devise any scheme that's appropriate to reflect local circumstances. Three councils have chosen to use those powers and I would encourage all councils to look at those powers to see what else is appropriate for local circumstance but certainly for for those areas that have delivered a local scheme I would encourage them to continue with that uh, especially in view of the commitment by Scottish Government to to continue with the support we've announced today. Andy Whiteman followed by Willie Rennie. Uh, given the remit of Barclay Review and the fact that it asked only one question does the Cabinet Secretary agree that such a narrow remit and one solitary question is not the thorough and comprehensive review of the whole system promised by him in 2013. And in his statement, the Cabinet Secretary claims that adding farms would be a significant administrative burden, but since most farms will soon be on anyway because of the reintroduction of sporting rates, will he therefore reconsider this opposition? Cabinet Secretary. Hey, oh, first of all, on agricultural matters, if there's no intention to tax those properties, I don't really see the value in adding them to the role on the matter of wider consideration of alternatives to a property tax. It's not true to say that Barclay didn't consider these matters. They did, and they put it in the report of why they've ruled it out and came to the conclusion that a property tax, whilst not perfect, they didn't find any perfect property tax anywhere in the world, but they came to the conclusion that with refinement, eh, it can absolutely deliver. Willie Rennie, followed by Daniel Johnson. As the Finance Secretary has effectively admitted that these proposals will not be revenue neutral, 
how much are these measures going to cost? Oh, absolutely sparkling question to put in. You taught them all that, Mr. Wren. Cabinet Secretary. My estimation of the cost of the um, announcements today is approximately £80 million. Pounds. Daniel Johnson, followed by <coughs> Kenneth Gibson. Uh, given that some nurseries in my constituencies were facing a doubling of their bills, can I welcome the Cabinet Secretary listening to my calls and my advice on, on nurseries? I'm very appreciative of it. However, these increases raise the question about how the revaluations were arrived at. And I know the moves on data collection, but what reform will the Cabinet Secretary take forward to improve the transparency of the calculation on revaluation so all businesses can understand how their rates bill was arrived at, not just how much it is? Cabinet Secretary. Mr Johnson, uh, nice try for taking credit for my announcements, but I'm afraid my announcements are, are, are my announcements. But can I, can I uh, in, the, in, the, in, in, the, in the spirit of consensus, if the Labour Party have any further ideas they want me to consider, please do so constructively within the budget process, specifically to the question as to how assessors arrived at the values that they have. Maybe Mr Johnston, like many other members in this chamber, should realise it wasn't me who undertook the revaluation, it's the assessors who are independent of government, and Mr Johnston would be well advised to direct his questions to them. Kenneth Gibson, followed by Bill Bowman. Thank you very much, uh, Presiding Officer. The Cabinet Secretary rightly focused on growth and investment to make Scotland more competitive. Can I advise the Chamber the impact he anticipates these changes will have on economic growth on an annualised basis once fully implemented? Cabinet Secretary. I think that's, that's a very good question. It is difficult to quantify at this stage what it means by way of growth, but I am convinced that the recommendations that I am progressing with today will generate growth, will support our economy and will allow for a fairer, more transparent rate system as well. And in terms of showcasing what Scotland can do, gives us that competitive advantage eh, on non-domestic rates. And I think sets up, in a number of areas, advantages that don't exist elsewhere, and therefore should eh, deliver eh, on our economic strategy. Bill Bowman, followed by Richard Lockett. Thank you. What assessment has been carried out on the affordability of reducing the large business supplement in this year's budget? Cabinet Secretary. Well, it may be news to Mr Bowman, but I haven't um, produced uh, this year's budget. I understand from announcements that the UK, the UK budget may well be 22nd of November. So I look forward to constructive dialogue with all the parties uh, as to what may be in uh, this year's budget. And I hope that the Conservatives take a far more constructive approach than they did last year. Richard Lockhead, followed by Lane Smith. Can I warmly welcome the Cabinet Secretary's statement, in particular the ongoing 12.5% cap for hospitality businesses and exemption for nurseries in my constituency, which I'm also calling for very loudly. Uh, is the Cabinet Secretary aware that the rates valuation had a disproportionately negative impact on Murray businesses that was out of sync with local economic factors? And therefore, that his reference to the sector and assessors having to work together to explore alternative methods of valuation is extremely important if we were to avoid that in the future. And will he attach a timescale of when he expects to hear back from that work? Cabinet Secretary, there was a question there. Is the Cabinet Secretary aware? That was a cute way to do it. I think it is fair to say that Mr Lockhead has been very proactive and vocal on these uh, matters, also including implementation of the reliefs that were announced uh, earlier this year in, in March, if, if memory serves me uh, correctly, and I agree with all the points uh, that Mr Lockhead has made. Elaine Smith, followed by Fulton McGregor. Thank you, President Officer. Given the Barclay Review states that unfair advantages being gained by private schools due to charitable rates relief and should be removed by 2020, something I agree with, when exactly is the further report going to come forward on this and what opportunity will there be to scrutinise the government's decision on this specific issue? Cabinet Secretary. By any standard, the government's response is swift. Uh, we received the report uh, some three weeks ago. The First Minister responded on the first day back in Parliament. I'm addressing matters now, publishing a statement of intent or a poli policy position on the recommendations. And further, I've said that there will be an implementation plan because many of these recommendations, will, some will require statutory legislation, some secondary, some guidance, some direction. And uh, therefore, I propose to come back uh, before or by the implementation plan, which will be concluded by the end of the year, with a position on that and all other remaining matters. Fulton McGregor, followed by Liz Smith. Thank you, President Officer. Can the Cabinet Secretary 
expand on what measures he is taking forward on the back of the Bartley Review to ensure that more vacant property, such as there is in my constituency of Coatbridge and Christ, and particularly in the town centre area, is brought back into use? Cabinet Secretary. Well, Barclay had specifically suggested looking at empty property rates relief uh, and also further incentives for occupying uh, an empty property. And as one example, I'll be expanding the fresh start relief that I introduced in 2013, and hopefully that will be a further stimulant in reoccupying empty properties. Liz Smith, followed by Claire Hockey. Uh, could I ask the Cabinet Secretary what assessment the Scottish Government has taken in conjunction with local authorities about the likely economic impact on small independent special schools which look after some of our most vulnerable children, should they no longer be eligible for charitable relief? Cabinet Secretary. I want to get the detail absolutely right on this, so I'll write to the member, but it's my understanding from the recommendations and what I'm proposing today that there's no change to the status of those schools, but I'll absolutely confirm that. Claire Hockey, followed by James Kelly. Thank you. Can the Cabinet Secretary outline what measures he's taking in response to the Bartley Review to support the development of renewable energy sector? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, the uh, support we are expanding includes you know, things that renewables would benefit from, whether it's small business bonus and other areas, uh, but certainly the expansion of the hydro relief will be very welcomed by the renewable sector. James Kelly, followed by Ben McPherson. Can the Cabinet Secretary guarantee that the £80 million of funding measures that he's announced today will not result in a, an 80, not, not result in a consequential £80 million of cuts in the local government funding settlement? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, the, the funding package is all a matter for the budget, but I think it would be a misdirection to suggest that what is happening today will be funded through a reduction in the local government settlement. This will be all part of the budget negotiations that I'll undertake with parties as I present the, the draft budget in due course. Ben McPherson. Thank you, Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Government how they will support SMEs in the hospitality sector, like those in my constituency in Leith, following the report of, Bar of the Barclay Review of Non-Domestic Rates. Cabinet Secretary. I mean, generally, we have uh, lowered the poundage for all uh, ratepayers. We've expanded the threshold for small business bonus and we've expanded the, the thresholds for large business supplement and specifically the cap for hospitality it will continue in the fashion that I've described and I'm sure that will be uh, welcomed um, across, uh, the, across the, the country. And just to go back to uh, Elaine Smith, uh, Liz Smith, sorry, question on special schools, I, I thought I heard you correctly, you said independent special schools. And that's the point of clarity I want to give you. I don't think there's any change for those with that specialist nature of, of service provided. Um, that's uh, different to the overall category of independent schools, and I'll make sure that you have that detail. Thank you. That concludes minutes to the Cabinet Secretary. And I'll suspend for a few minutes uh, to allow front benches to take the place for the next item of business.